Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this short game to the cold video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with several pieces of news concerning Zen 2 and Ryzen 3000. The first of which being official confirmation from AMD concerning the layout of the CCX, which forms the basis of the next generation chip. So Zen and Zen Plus had four CPU cores per CCX Modules. So, for example, if you wanted an 8-core processor, you would put together two of these CCXs, and that would obviously result in 8 cores, because 2 times 4 equals 8. Hard math, but we've gotten there. So, there was a lot of expectation that we would see pretty much identical setup for Zen 2, and indeed Robert Halleck uh, from AMD has actually confirmed that this is the case. He wouldn't give exact details of some of the changes to the, like for example the infinity fabric he said that when they're ready to reveal those technical details they would do so but at the very least we have confirmation of something that we pretty much knew was the case but still it's nice to have official confirmation from amd we also have another benchmark for this time a game that has emerged on chip hell a user who has access to a 3600 engineering sample has been pitting the CPU up against an i7-8700, which is a pretty good comparison given both CPUs have, of course, 6 cores, 12 threads. And what's the verdict? Well, only one benchmark was given, and that is PUBG, but the rest of the system setup was identical. According to the user, they were both using an RTX 2080 Ti with the memory frequency running at 3000 MHz, of course for DDR4, not for the 2080 Ti. And for the average frame rate, we're looking at around a 6.3% increase for the uh, 3600. So it goes to 183 from 172 of the 8700, uh, but the highest level of frame rate increases by around 10%. So that's actually rather significant. And there's also another, that is a pretty good indicator that the uh, 3600 is going to be a really beastly gaming CPU. And we also have another benchmark that's popped up on the user benchmark database. It seems that the 3600 chips are just more common in the wild, or maybe it's the same person who's been passing the same chip around for all we know. Anyway, we have a chip here which is listed as a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz and running up to 3.75 gigahertz for the turbo. That's average, which is really interesting given what we know about the turbo frequency uh, of this chip. It is running, however, on an X470 motherboard and the memory frequency is 16 gigabytes running at 21, uh, 2.1 gigahertz. Um, so the results are actually really good. Um, they're actually very similar to what we saw with the engineering sample, obviously with a few changes here and there. Uh, the memory clock frequencies are not ideal, quite honestly, for this particular chip, which is probably hampering performance a little bit. But if we compare this against, you know, what I'm going to compare it to, yep, you guessed it, an 8700, AMD certainly do appear rather favourable in the uh, performance metrics. Next up we have IPC discussions for the Zen 2 architecture. AMD put out an official slide which states that we will be seeing up to 15% increase for the Zen 2 architecture or Ryzen 3000, I guess, which is probably more interesting to many of you. But MSI in a live stream have also put out another figure which is 13% on a slide. Now the 13% is actually what I've been using uh, quite frequently in my videos. So there's a question then, what exactly is going on here? Like why uh, our AMD showing a 15%, whereas everyone else is showing around 13%. Well, I'm still waiting for official confirmation from AMD. From my understanding, though, uh, the 15% figure is what is being touted as, like, best case scenario. I believe the benchmark is spec int. So it's basically, like, you know, not exactly the stars will align level, because, uh, you know, that was the 29% increase, apparently, that we might be seeing. But this is like, you know, typical best case scenario for workload. On the other hand, the 13%, which MSI have been using, is apparently more along the lines of like the average increase in performance from one architecture to the next architecture. Quite frankly, though, even if it's only 10% on average, which is actually way lower than the figures being listed here, but let's just play devil's advocate for a moment. That's still a massive jump from one architecture to another. 
And given the pricing of chips like the 3600, I imagine that this processor is going to be an amazing upgrade, particularly if your motherboard is an X370 and your manufacturer of that board has provided a BIOS update that allows you to plonk in the chip. It essentially means that you could plonk in a 3600 or whatever and get a really nice gaming system for just a few hundred bucks. Obviously, you've probably got fast memory anyway, especially if you've got a first generation Ryzen. So I think for a lot of folks that this chip or this series of processors is going to be a really tantalizing upgrade. Next up, we have some Ice Lake news with the Gen 11 graphics. And there are actually a couple of very interesting benchmarks uh, that we need to take into consideration. The first of which is actually on Geekbench, where an Ice Lake result absolutely demolishes a Ryzen 3700U. So the 15 watt 1065G7, I still don't really like the naming convention, but whatever, is up against 25 watt 3700U. And the uh, two results that we're interested in for this particular part of the video anyway would be the open cl performance and i'm going to use a, a comparison image that dylan 522p has actually um put together for us on twitter so thanks very much to him because it makes it just really easy for us to get a nice idea of what actually is going on here between the performance. Now, bear in mind that you also have a clock speed difference between the two chips as well, 1.4 gigahertz versus 1.1 gigahertz. But either way, the performance difference between these two chips is actually monumental, with Ice Lake having a 67% advantage overall, it does lose in some tests, without any question. For example, on Depth of Field and Sobel, yes, it does lose out to Ice Lake, and in a couple of tests, you're only looking at around a 15% improvement. But the really weird one to me is particle physics, and I want to know what's going on there. It's obviously some optimization that is part of the Ice Lake IGPU slash you know, processor, but particle physics is 2,774% faster than what the 3700U is able to achieve, which is absolutely just bonkers. Indeed, if you also take a look at a, another entry on Ice Lake, which is for a uh, Geekbench entry where we can see the CPU performance, this is of a Dell XPS 13 inch 7390 in one. The name just rolls off the tongue. Very easy to remember. That's what I like about these marketing names. It's using a Ice Lake processor, of course, and has access to 32 gigabytes of memories. The Ice Lake processor is four cores, eight threads, and we can indeed see that it is Ice Lake simply because of, well, for one, the fact it tells us uh, in the model name, but for two, we also see confirmation in the level two cache and also data cache where it's gone to 48 kilobytes for data and the level 2 cache has increased per core to 512 kilobytes from just 256 kilobytes. Now this chip is running up to 3.5 gigahertz uh, with a base frequency of 1.5 gigahertz. That's the CPU cores of course, not the, not the GPU clock. And the single core score is 5234 points which is very impressive, at least I personally think it's very impressive. Whereas the multi-core score is 17,330 points. If we compare this against a, another Geekbench entry, this time the Zen 2 based 6-core, six 12-thread six, uh, 3600 chip, it scores just 5,061 points for single core, whereas multi-core score is considerably higher. After all, it does have way more threads. It has a score of 25,481. But this chip is running up to 3.99 gigahertz for the turbo frequency. It has a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz. I personally believe that Ice Lake and the Sunny Cove architecture are going to be really impressive. Unfortunately though, it doesn't help us as desktop users because at the end of the day, it's not being released for desktop, which kind of sucks. And therefore we have to wait for Comet Lake and goodness knows how well Comet Lake is going to perform 
up against Zen 2. I mean, honestly, AMD have simply caught Intel with its pants down at the moment for the desktop side of things. It's unfortunately frustrating for us as consumers because it would be amazing if Ice Lake was going to launch, let's say, the end of this year, because it would put an awful, um, for desktop I mean to clarify, uh, or a 10nm next generation Sunny Cove based processor for desktop, it would put an amazing amount of pressure on AMD, and hopefully I would have actually spurred them on to release a 16 core CPU earlier after all, once again, we know there's engineering samples, but AMD is just holding it back. But for the mobile side of the equation, it's really cool, I mean, that is a ridiculous amount of performance for what is essentially a mobile device. It's just, it's kind of bonkers to me that we have that level of CPU performance. And I really look forward to seeing what uh, is going to happen in the broader e ecosystem when AMD starts to put out uh, Zen 2 powered APUs uh, later on as well. There's also one final uh, piece of Ice Lake news that I do want to cover. And this comes to us from uh, WCCF Tech. And what they did is they managed to compare an Ice Lake CPU running at 15 watts versus 25 watts. Obviously with 25 watts mode activated, it runs at higher frequencies. So according to them, the 15 watt configuration is for uh, Ultrabooks, very thin Ultrabooks, whereas the 25 watt option is going to be more used for slightly thicker notebook type of devices. However, when running in the 25 watt mode, the GPU increases performance by 43%, which is pretty damn impressive. They use Counter-Strike uh, sitting and standing in the exact same place, but simply just increased uh, the chip from 15 watt to 25 watt mode. And by doing so, the frame rate went from the high mid 60s up to the high 90s to 100. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel because it helps us out a ton. You can also comment down below which particular Ryzen chip that you're considering buying, or are you going to be purchasing a laptop-like device which is going to be using Ice Lake? If so, are you excited? Um, you can also find us down below in the description box on social media, as well as Amazon affiliate links and Patreon. Don't feel you have to donate, but if you can spare a dollar a month, that does help us out with the channel costs. And you can also, uh, of course, just use Amazon affiliate links if you need to purchase something from Amazon, because we get a few pennies from that, and it doesn't cost you anything more either. With all of that said, take care of yourselves, have a great day, bye for now.